you've noticed that in your relationships you have a pattern of overgiving. You're always the self-sacrificial one, you're always overgiving, and you're always in the listener role, in the support role. You find yourself going round to um, you know, a friend's house or a friend's, you know, meeting up with a friend, and all you do is like listen to their problems. And you've discovered you're like, okay, this is a pattern that I have. And where did that pattern come from? We discover why it is that you've attracted these kind of friends. It's because it reminds you of someone. So the questions you need to ask yourself are with regards to the friend that's kind of taking a lot from you or you're overgiving, whatever the dynamic is. Who does this person remind me of? Who does this person remind me of? In what way is this pattern familiar? In what way is this pattern familiar? And what am I willing to do now? What am I willing to do now? So this person might remind you of when you used to go to your great aunt Sally's house. I don't have a great aunt Sally, this is just a random thing. You used to go to your great aunt Sally's house and you would always just listen to her. Perhaps she was someone that was really wounded, in a lot of pain, perhaps she was very dramatic, perhaps she was even a little, dare I say, narcissistic, right? And she was someone that liked to talk and just have other people like listen to her. And you used to sit there as a kid and be the one that was just quiet, right? You might have even been told children are meant to be seen and not heard. That's a little bit Victorian, but I think some people carried that over when they were raising us in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever decade. And so you were the good kid and you were quiet. And that kind of fostered this pattern and perhaps it was a pattern at home too, or instead it was a pattern at home. And you were always in the pattern of being the listener, the fixer, and you built, built a lot of esteem, self-esteem around that. You felt like it's the only way that you could be really loved, appreciated, um, seen. The only way you could be safe was to be in that role, right? So you find yourself playing out this pattern with friends, all people that you come into contact with in your life, whether they're actual friends that you've chosen or whether they're people that you gravitate towards, colleagues and such, or whether they're people that gravitate to you. Like if you're that person that always has some random person in the queue at Tesco saying, hey, isn't it a really shitty day today, blah, 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 and they start spilling out their problems onto you and that keeps happening to you, that's a sign. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen to everyone. Those kind of people look for a certain kind of person to pour out their stories to, right? They're, they're not healthy. They're not emotionally healthy. So they're looking for someone that they think is a bit of a soft touch that will listen to them. That person has been you, but that's going to stop now, right? It was that when you do set boundaries, it's not all sunshine and rainbows and buttercups, right? Some people will push back and will be really weird with you and will try and make out like you're mean or you're wrong or, you know, why are you being weird with me? Why have you done this? When they don't, and with some people you might have even had a conversation and been like look this is what I need otherwise I feel drained but then you say I don't feel heard I feel as though I'm really on the brunt of receiving a lot of your emotional pain and I understand that you're hurting but I think it would be best for you to actually go into grief counselling so I really look forward to seeing you when when you've gone through your process and there might be some people who you know just saying this you're like they are not going to go for that and so you have to make a decision if they're not going to get emotionally healthy. And if that means whenever I see them, I'm drained and I feel like shit, then what am I prepared to do?